called the Code And Podcast. tell me what we're here for. What, what is this thing that we're attending? Excitement, <laughs> innovation, and shine getters. Wow. <laughs> Even better. Okay, I am in beautiful College Station, Texas, home of the Texas A&M Aggies. And I am here for the first ever Veterinary Innovation Summit. I gotta tell you, we've got some of the brightest minds, some of the most creative folks in the pet industry here gathered in College Station. So I can't wait, next couple of days, we're gonna be filling our brains with the latest ideas, what we think the future is gonna turn out to be like, and how can we ultimately help veterinarians and pet owners provide the best care for their pets. I got to tell you, I am super amped up. I'm excited to be a part of this. Uh, tomorrow is going to be a real game-changing event for the profession. So let's take a look. All right, I want straight up water. Straight up water, yeah. No ice. Make it look like a fruit for a drink. That's right. <laughs> Today we really get into the serious business of innovation and last night it started off with a great sort of introduction and welcome by Dean Eleanor Green who really kind of challenged our profession and said if we don't disrupt ourselves we're going to get disrupted by outside forces and that might not be ideal for the pets we love. Then we had a truly inspirational and I would say provocative talk from <laughs> Ryan Bethencourt, that's Mia Carey from NABC. We had Ryan Bethencourt who showed us actually what is happening now. Not in the future, not in our dreams, but some of the amazing technologies that are transforming our lives today. And so I gotta tell you, I'm really excited about these sessions. I mean, we've got some of the best and brightest in the world right here to talk about nothing but innovating in the veterinary space. So we gotta get, gotta get to work. I will say, this is some of the healthiest snacks that you're going to find anywhere, so way to go, BIS. Okay, I am here with the man of the weekend. This is my good buddy, Dr. Adam Little. He is head of the... Innovation Entrepreneurship here at Texas A&M's Vet School. All right, well, as you know, we have got like three amazing days with some of the brightest minds in veterinary medicine to discuss about innovation, telemedicine, applications, just crazy stuff. Uh, what made you do this? I think our profession's at a really interesting time. There's a lot of cool stuff. People aren't really sure how to process it, but they know they want to have a different sort of conversation. And at the same time, there's people outside of the profession who are looking at what we're doing and they're thinking, man, this is this is cool. And how do I get vets to understand you know, the tools that I'm building or the diagnostics that I want to deploy in the market? And so how do you kind of foster those collaborations in a way that's much more like positive and optimistic? And that usually doesn't happen in traditional veterinary conversations. And so the point of the summit is twofold mainly. First is provide an opportunity for existing stakeholders of animal health who are at the center of these industries who want to push it forward but maybe today are kind of restricted by the immune system. And then on the flip side, look at who are the people outside of the profession who are making some really big impacts on things like pet health and pet care who either directly or indirectly have a veterinary relationship, need us, and don't really know how to work with us. And how can we use this conference as a way to like drop all the barriers to those conversations? All right, so you may not know this, but this guy also runs with some pretty cool guys, Singularity University, Ray Kurzweil, yep. uh, some of my buddies, Stephen Kotler also involved, Peter Diamandis, all that stuff. How did you like the Singularity U? Uh, it was uh, pretty eye-opening. You know, when I was in vet school, in my last year of vet school, I was applying, everybody's applying for internships, right? And I'm watching TED Talks of Peter at, at uh, you know, giving his presentation at TED, and he's talking about the concepts of abundance and, and the things he wrote in his book, and then he says, you know, we're opening this university, and we want people to apply. And so everybody's filling out their internship paperwork, and I'm there applying for this <laughs> weird program, Silicon Valley. I get in, and I was just drawn to this idea that there was this conversation happening about society and the world, and it was really positive and optimistic, and there was this institution that was going to bring together of all these different disciplines that really wanted to do something positive. And so I get there, 
and you're just like surrounded by people who th there, there is no limit, right? And, and nothing is impossible. And then as opposed to people saying like that idea that will never happen, it's they're they're one up in you. Well, why would we do it like this when we could do it like this? And suddenly you're in this mindset that just unlocks so many possibilities. So it was a, a really eye-opening experience and one that you know really put me on a bit of a different trajectory. Well, I'll tell you this: everything is possible with people like you. <laughs> I mean, what he has done here is quite an accomplishment. But more importantly, it's what you're doing to impact the lives of vet students all over the world, certainly here at Texas a and I gotta tell you, Adam, really glad to know you, man. Awesome. Great Thank job. You. Thank you very much. Yeah. Woohoo! Woo! <laughs>with a very special guest. This is Dean Eleanor Green from Texas A&M Veterinary School. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. Well, you have just done something spectacular. You have helped put on the first ever Veterinary Innovation Summit. So how did this come to be? Well, we're pretty excited that we did the inaugural Veterinary Innovation Summit. And the way it came to be is that we've been thinking a long time about the fact that change is here. The future is upon us. There's so many disruptive changes out there that if we don't incorporate them in the profession now, we will be outside looking in. And we think that we have so many opportunities for this profession to not just benefit but totally prosper from all these technologies and the different business models and all the things that are out there can make our profession so much better. And the thing is, is that people in today's society are going to demand these technologies. They are going to demand them, and especially the younger generations who grew up with them. I mean, it's part of their limbs, these, uh, these technologies. And so if, we are, if they are going to expect them, they're going to, they are going to demand them from us. So they're going to happen. And if they happen outside the veterinary profession, then we're going to be running along trying to chase and catch up. And that's not a good position to be in yeah. and because then veterinary medicine will already be occurring outside of our profession. We must lead here. Wow. We, must not, we must not just adopt and accept. We must lead. All right, I'm here with a pretty extraordinary veterinarian, Elliot Gerber. Yeah. Good to see you, man. Yeah, thanks. So Good this guy, international, travels all over the world, but it's because he's in the military, so God bless him for his service. So what are you doing now? Yeah, so I am just finishing out my time on active duty in the military. I've been working with the Navy SEALs in San Diego for the last three years, which is pretty wow. awesome. Um, but I'm going to be transitioning into kind of exploring more of what this weekend is all about with innovation and technology and how that affects the profession, helps animals and people too. So it's been making some connections and um, I wanted to say thank you to you for uh, blurbing, endorsing my book a couple years ago. Uh, this, guy's this guy's the best. This guy's the best. I know you do a lot of hardcore military stuff. What's, what's harder to work with, a Navy SEAL <laughs> or like a Doberman? Talking about the humans. Oh, I, I'm yeah, aware yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I'd say probably they could be a tougher case. They're not as compliant generally. Um, but that's what makes them fun to work with because they're actually smart, independent, thinking guys.